Look at the condition of this clock. This is a 1942 Atmos II clock. It's filthy. Now, I often hear of clocks that will run for 30 minutes like this one did, and then it'll stop. There could be a lot of reasons. One of the main reasons this clock stopped is the fork was horribly bent, and it would not allow the impulse roller to operate properly. So, as we look at this fork, we can see it's probably been worked over a number of times in the last 82 years. I did make some adjustments with the fork, and I thought, well, you know what, let's go ahead and see if this will work. Installed it on the clock, and same thing, it only ran for about 30 minutes and then stopped. And as you can see, it looks like it's a pretty nice straight um, adjustment that I made. It's a, definitely an improvement from where it was when I received the clock. I'm looking at the interior of the fork. I did polish this with 3200 grit sandpaper along with polishing the impulse roller. I'm making sure that everything is nice and straight before I poise it. I'm going to try and get this as straight as possible. All of the Atmos clocks have these little windows that are built into the movement so that you can inspect how the escapement wheel interacts with the pallet forks. So these are the pallets on the fork. And as the clock is moving the fork from the left to the right, look at right there, we're gonna watch it move. Okay, so you see on the right side, the escapement has been captured by the pallet jewel. And what's gonna happen is as the impulse roller moves across to the front of the clock, right now it's rotating, you can't see it, but it's rotating from the right to the middle. The escapement is going to push against this stone and that's what's going to move the pallet to the left side to engage. There we go, we're pushing. All right, so what's happening is the fork is engaging the impulse roller and applying force to it. It's rotating it now to the left side of the clock. Okay, so that impulse roller is rotating around. It's gonna be coming back. It's going to engage the, the fork again and we should see some force being applied on the escapement to push that, here we go, we're pushing, boom. We're re-engaging the escapement. This happens every 30 seconds, twice a minute, all day long. This is how we're transferring power from the escapement to the fork to the impulse roller. When the fork is out of poise and it's not balanced, it will not engage the escapement. And we're gonna see that here shortly. Oh, we're still good here. What I did was I just um, mimicked what was happening with this fork when I received the clock. And this is why it would only run for 30 seconds. This is a pretty common uh, problem with clocks that don't have poised forks. People end up manipulating them over time, thinking they're bending them in the right direction, and they're really not. You really do have to poise your fork. So even though our fork looked really good, I put it on the clock, I didn't poise it. So this may be the rotation where uh, things start to get hung up. It, it, this can work properly with an unbalanced or an unpoised fork for some time, then all of a sudden the clock will stop working. Okay, we're just gonna keep watching. I can actually see the, ro the uh, reflection of the roller. Okay, here we go, right there. Okay, so if we have a fork that's not in balance, it didn't get pushed over to the left side of the clock enough. It's gonna get hung up, it's never gonna transfer power to the impulse roller and it will eventually take about 30 minutes and it will stop running. And that's what happened with this clock. I removed the fork from the movement, even though it looked straight. Once I put it on my tool to poise the uh, forks, you can see how out of balance the fork is. This is why it will not rotate to one side more than the other. One side is just too heavy, the other side moves easily because it's very light. 
This looks much better. Just a little bit of bending got me perf almost perfectly poised. I'm going to reinstall this on the movement and see if the clock can operate properly. Here's a time lapse of the fork in motion. This is the critical part. This took me about an hour to get everything perfect because you're only allowed about a point one millimeter clearance between the guard pin at the top of the fork as it moves through the roller crescent. Very, very difficult to get everything lined up perfect, but once it's lined up, it's beautiful. And here we have it, almost a complete Atmos II. The base is um, in storage because it's easier for me if I need to add or rem remove weights to the ballast, not to have to monkey around with the four screws that attach the base. So it's gonna be regulating like this. We have a couple of 528-8s being regulated also. These have all been repaired, a 540, a 528-6, and of course the Atmos too. It is running at crazy good amplitude. Look at that. This clock is 82 years old. It's running at 562 degree amplitude. Why is it running so strong? Well, we have a nice clean movement. It looks very different than the photograph from the beginning or the video from the beginning. We have a nice shiny impulse roller. It's going to engage a perfectly poised and positioned fork. And we're gonna throw that impulse roller all the way around. Let's wait for it to come over to this side. Oh, it's gonna be hard to see because this other clock is in the way. Here we go. Look at that roller. Here comes almost back to the front of the clock. <laughs> There's so much power being delivered to all of these clocks that you'll see that the balance tube is always bouncing. It's not because it's the balance tube isn't poised. These have all been poised. They're just delivering so much power. That one, you can stick, it's hard to see that one. They'll all bounce just a little bit. Here we go, see it bouncing. So here we have um, Atmos 2, 82 year old clock, is working perfectly. This one's going to stay in my collection. It is a beautiful clock. It was dead on arrival, ran for 30 minutes because that's what happens when you have an un, when you have a messed up fork that's not working properly, it's not transferring power from your escapement to the impulse roller. There's a lot of complaints about clocks that will run for 30 minutes and then they'll stop. They're probably not getting any power from the main spring. Even if they're not getting power, you set the balance into motion, turn it maybe, I turn mine three quarters of a turn, release it. If it stops within 30 minutes, it's probably a pallet or a, a uh, fork that needs to be properly poised. Hey, look at that roller coming back. Just terrific power, such a beautiful clock. So stay tuned when this clock is done being regulated, I will have a video of the overhaul process for this 1942 Atmos II.